guys, this is Mr. Mellings, and in this video, we are going to learn how to name and write the chemical formulas for inorganic acids. And before we start writing and naming the chemical formulas for inorganic acids, it's important to have out a polyatomic ion list, like the one that you see right here, as well as your periodic tables. So have those out while you watch this video and while you follow along, so that way it makes some sense. But let's first start talking about how we're going to name inorganic acids that do not contain oxygen. Okay, so in this video, we're learning how to name inorganic acids, and those are typically going to be your acids that you're talking about in a first year inorganic chemistry course. That's probably going to be a high school chemistry course or a first year college course. Okay, uh, so we're going to learn how to name these acids that do not contain oxygen in it. First of all, before we start learning how to name these, it's probably important to first understand how we can determine by looking at the chemical formula if a substance is an acid or not. And that's pretty simple. Most of the time in a general chemistry course, if it starts with hydrogen in the chemical formula, it's probably going to be an acid. For example, if we take a look, HCl starts with hydrogen, it's hydrochloric acid. If we take a look right here, H3P is going to be an acid. H2S is going to be an acid. HCN is going to be an acid, etc., etc. So if you have the chemical formula and it starts with hydrogen more times than not in an inorganic chemistry course, that is to say a first year chemistry course, it is going to be an acid. And so how do we name these? How do we name these acids that do not contain oxygen? If you notice, every one of these does not have oxygen in it. Well, the rule says right here to name an acid that does not contain oxygen, simply use the prefix hydro followed by the root of the anion that that hydrogen is bonded to, followed by the suffix ic, followed by the word acid. So if we take a look right here, if we want to name this, we can see there's no oxygen in this acid. So that way it gets the prefix hydro. We can tell uh, by looking at the anion, this is, uh, this is chloride. We're going to use the root of chloride, which is just chlor. We're going to add an ick ending, then we're going to add the word acid and put that together. And we have hydrochloric acid, the stuff that's in our stomachs, right? If we take a look right here, there's no oxygen here. So we're going to use the prefix hydro. Right? We're going to use the root of phosphorus, which is phosphor. We're going to add an ick ending, add the word acid for hydrophosphoric acid. If we take a look right here, we can tell this is an acid because it starts with hydrogen. And so we don't see any oxygen in this acid here. So we start off with the prefix hydro. The root of sulfur just happens to be sulfur. We're going to add the ending then we're going to add acid to that and we have hydrosulfuric acid if we take a look right here hf does not have oxygen in it so we use the prefix hydro followed by the root of the anion which is fluoride so fluor we're change the i to an ick ending and add the word acid hi is going to become hydroiodic acid hcn we know that cn is the polyatomic ion cyanide right we learned this in an earlier video that CN is going to be cyanide. And so when we name this, we're not going to use the, uh, I'm sorry, it has no oxygen in it, so we're going to use the prefix hydro. We know that this is cyanide, so we're going to use the root of cyanide, which is just cyan. We're going to add ick and add the word acid for hydrocyanic acid. Okay, so follow these rules when you're naming inorganic acids that do not contain oxygen, and you should be good to go. What if you have an inorganic acid, though, that does, in fact, have oxygen in it? Well, there's a different set of rules that we're going to learn about next. So what if you have an inorganic acid that does have oxygen in it? For example, if we take a look at every one of these right here, we can see that they're acids because they all start with hydrogen. However, if you'll notice, they all have oxygen in them. Okay, so when we're naming acids or inorganic acids that do contain oxygen, the rules are a little bit different and they're a little bit lengthy. But if you want to go ahead and pause this and take a look at these rules, you're more than welcome to do that. It says right here that acids that contain oxygen do not use the prefix hydro. So if it has oxygen in it, do not use the prefix hydro. And if the acid begins with hydrogen and is followed by a polyatomic ion that ends in eight, then simply use the root of the polyatomic ion followed by the suffix ick followed by the word acid. If the acid begins with hydrogen and is followed by a polyatomic ion that ends in ite, then simply use the root of that polyatomic ion followed by the suffix us, followed by the word acid. 
Lastly, it says to use the prefix hypo if the acid has one less oxygen than the ite ending acid, and the prefix per if the acid has one more oxygen than the ate ending acid. So there's all kinds of rules right here. That's why I recommend that you just pause it and take a look at this so you understand it. But let's take a look at an example. First of all, we see this is an acid because it starts with hydrogen. It has oxygen in it, so we're not going to use the prefix hyd hydro. Okay, We do not use the prefix hydro here. We can see that the polyatomic ion this hydrogen is bonded to is chlorate. It's chlorate. So when you have a polyatomic ion that ends in 8 and it's bonded to hydrogen here, forming an acid, the 8 becomes an ick. Okay, the 8 becomes an ick. We're going to use the root of the polyatomic ion. This is chlorate. We'll use the root, which is just chlor. Add these together and we get chloric acid. If you take a look right here, in this case here, we can see it's an acid because it starts with H again, but now the hydrogen is bonded to chlorite. The polyatomic ion here is chlorite. ClO2 is chlorite. So when you have a polyatomic ion that ends in ite and it's bonded to hydrogen here, forming an acid, the ite turns into an OUS ending and we use the root of chlorate, I'm sorry, chlorite, which is just chlor. Add this together, you have chlorous acid. If you take a look right here, HClO, right? We can see that this polyatomic ion here has one less oxygen than the one above it, right? So we're going to use the prefix hypo now. We're going to use the prefix hypo. We're going to use the root of this polyatomic ion, which is hypochlorite. We're going to add the OUS ending to that for hypo chlorous acid. If you take a look right here, H2SO4 is sulfuric acid, right? Little Johnny died one day at last. He is no more for what he thought was H2O was H2SO4. There you go. Some chemistry humor, some chemistry poems for you. Okay. So H2SO4, this is sulfate, but when it's bonded to hydrogen forming an acid, that eight is going to turn into an ick. This is sulfite, but when this polyatomic ion that ends in ite is bonded to hydrogen, the ite is going to become an S for sulfurous acid. We have nitrate here bonded to hydrogen, forming an acid, so the ate turns into an ick for nitric acid. If we take a look right here, we have nitrite bonded to hydrogen, forming an acid. Therefore, we change the ite ending to an OUS ending for nitrous acid. HBrO4, perbromic acid, right? Why is it poor bromic acid? Because if you take a look right here, BRO3 is bromate. It's bromate, right? And so BRO4 has one extra oxygen, okay? So anytime it has one extra oxygen, you're going to use the prefix per, so per bromic compared to just bromic acid. Here is bromous acid right here, and here is hypobromous acid. Okay, so take a look at that. It all has to do with the number of oxygens that are in this acid here. Right, we have bromate right here bonded to hydrogen, three oxygens. Uh, bromite bonded to hydrogen here only has two oxygens, so it becomes bromous. If you take a look, hypobromous has one less oxygen than bromous acid does. And if you take a look right here, perbromic acid is going to have one extra oxygen compared to bromic acid. Here you go, here is phosphoric acid, here is phosphorous acid. Take a look at the difference, one less oxygen. Here is iotic acid, here is iotis acid one less oxygen here. All right, so those are the rules when naming acids that do contain oxygen. There's a lot going on here. Go ahead and feel free to pause and rewind and pause and rewind and, and watch this and uh, over and over until you understand it. All right, so now let's take a look at writing chemical formulas of acids. When we write the chemical formulas for acids, it's pretty simple. Okay, the ionic charges of the uh, the hydrogen ion and the anion that is bonded to, they must add up to zero. So if we take a look right here, if we have hydrophosphoric acid and we want to write the chemical formula for it, we can see it has the prefix hydro, so it's not going to have oxygen in it. We know that phosphor refers to phosphorus and it has a negative three charge, right? The ion has a negative three charge. Hydrogen has a positive one charge, so we're going to need three of these. We're going to need three hydrogen ions to cancel out the charge of the phosphide ion here. So H3P is the chemical formula. If we take a look at this one right here, hydrosulfuric acid uses the prefix hydro here, so there is no oxygen in this. Sulfur forms negative two or two minus ions. Hydrogen forms positive one ions, so you're going to need two of these to cancel out the charge of sulfide over here. If we take a look at sulfuric acid, right? It has no prefix hydro. 
Uh, therefore, it's going to contain oxygen and sulfate here has a minus 2 charge. This polyatomic ion sulfate has a negative 2 charge. This has a positive 1 charge. And so you're going to need two of these to cancel out the charge of sulfate over here. And if you take a look at chromic acid, we know chromic is a 2 minus ion. This is a plus 1 ion. So H2CrO4 is the correct chemical formula. Carbonous acid, carbonite, I'm sorry. Yes, carbonite has a, a, a two minus charge, and this guy here has a positive one charge. So you're going to need two of these to cancel out the charge of uh, carbonite here. If you take a look right here, fluorate has uh, a negative one charge or a one minus charge, and this guy here has a positive one charge. So they already add up to zero, so you're not going to have to add any subscript to this hydrogen right here. All right, so that's how you're going to uh, write the chemical formulas for acids. Make sure that the Ionic charges of the hydrogen and the anions bonded to add up to zero by adding a subscript. What I recommend you do at this point in the video is pause it right here. Go ahead and pause it before uh, I go through these answers for you and try these on your own. Take five or ten minutes to try these on your own. Okay, so go ahead and pause it. Now I'm going to go ahead and start uh, filling in these answers here. All right, so it says if the acid name is given, write the chemical formula. And if the chemical formula is given, then write the name of the acid. So here's the name, hydrobromic acid, right? Hydrobromic acid is going to be HBr, right? It uses the prefix hydro, so there's no oxygen in here. Hydrogen has a positive one charge. Bromide has a negative one charge. They already add up to zero. So just HBr will be the correct chemical formula. If you take a look right here, here's the chemical formula. What is the name? Well, we can see BrO2 here is bromite. Okay, so bromite, when it's bonded to hydrogen, the ite turns into an OUS ending. And so this is just bromous acid. If we take a look right here, acetic acid. Well, we know it's going to start with H, which has a positive one charge. And we have acetic acid. So it looks like this H is going to be bonded to the acetate ion, C2H3O2. Make sure you have that polyatomic ion list in front of you. And this has a negative one charge. So these two charges add up to zero already. So just hc 23 c 2 h 3 o 2 is the correct chemical formula. If we take a look at this one right here, HIO. If you take a look right here, this is going to be hypo. Uh, iodite, hypoiodite, right? And so when it's bonded to hydrogen, we change the ite to an OUS ending for hypoiodous acid. This is a tricky one here. Let's take a look at this one, CRO4. That's going to be chromate, but it's bonded to hydrogen, so this is going to be chromic acid. Let's take a look at this one, fluorous acid. We have to write the chemical formula. The OUS ending tells you that it's going to be the hydrogen here, which has a positive one charge, is going to be bonded to fluorite, fluorite, which is going to be FO2 with a negative one charge. These two charges add up to zero. So just HFO2 is going to be the correct chemical formula for fluorous acid. All right, what about this one right here? What's the name of this? Well, BO3 is called borate, and so since it's bonded to hydrogen, it's an acid. We'll change the eight ending to an ick, and this is just boric acid. All right, let's take a look at this one, periotic acid. This is going to be periotic acid, and so this is going to be H with a plus charge. Iotic acid is going to be uh, IO4. Iodate is IO3. Per means there's one extra oxygen. This has a negative one charge. These two ionic charges add up to zero, so just HiO4. If we take a look, we know that ASO4 is arsenate. It's bonded to hydrogen, so we'll change that eight to an ick for arsenic acid. All right, if we take a look right here, hyponitrous acid. Okay, so hypo means it's gonna have one less oxygen then nitrite. Nitrite is NO2, right? NO2. So hypo would be just NO, and this has a negative one charge. And of course, because it's an acid, it's bonded to hydrogen for a plus one charge. These two add up to zero, so just HNO is the correct chemical formula. If we take a look right here, we know MNO4 is permanganate, but it's bonded to hydrogen. So the name of this is going to be permanganic acid.
permanganic acid, and this last one here, phosphorus, because it ends in OUS, you know it's the hydrogen here is going to be bonded to a polyatomic ion that ends in ite, and the polyatomic ion it's going to be bonded to is phosphite, right? Phosphite, which has a uh, three minus charge. Therefore, you're going to need three of these right here, right? Three of these positive one ions to cancel out the negative three charge of phosphite here. All right, so how did you do? If you did really good on this, then I would say that you're an expert at naming inorganic acids and writing the chemical formulas for uh, inorganic acids. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. Also feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments section down below and I hope you guys found this helpful.